Next, I want to show you a very powerful query that's called a totals query. With a totals query, I can start to make subtotals from my data. So if I double click on the orders table, it shows a list of all of the orders. Here we have 830 orders. Now watch, I'm going to sort it by customer. I'm just going to click on the pull down for the customer and I'll pick on sort A to Z. So notice how this customer has uh, six orders. This customer has four. This customer looks like it has seven. So now I want to get a subtotal. I want to subtotal the order amount field for each different customer. A great way to do that is with a totals query. So I'm going to close this table window. In this case, I don't have to save that design. If I picked on yes there, then it would be sorted by the customer's field the next time. So I'll say no, and it's fine. So here's how we make a totals query. It's going to start off as a normal query. So I'll pick on create up top, and I'll pick on query design again. Good. So we'll use the orders table. I'll double click on orders. Now, pretty soon, in another lesson that's coming up, we'll have queries that'll come from more than one table. I'll pick on close there. So it starts off as a normal query. Now follow my mouse up on the design menu, pick on the word totals right there. And it makes it into a total query. You can see how it has that, that word total there, which was not there before. So now with a totals query, I'll be able to get subtotals and subcounts and so on. The first field that you want to pick is the field that we want to group it on. So I want to double click on customer ID. Notice on the total row, it says we're going to group by the customer ID. So that means each customer will have exactly one record here. Whereas before Alfred's that I showed you had six records, it's going to summarize those into one record for each customer because of group by. Then we're going to pick another field that maybe you want to sum. So watch, I'm going to scroll down on the fields and double click on order amount. So we have the order amount field down here. Now look on the total row, it says group by. I don't want to group by that field. I want to do something different. So I'm going to click on that pull down where it says group by, and then we can do different calculations. So we have sum, average, minimum, maximum, count, standard deviation, variance. Now this one's kind of interesting. First means the first occurrence uh, of, of the order amount. So that would be like their first order that they made in chronological order. And this is the last order that they made. So these are things that maybe Axis can do that Excel can't do very easily. So here, uh, uh, first, which means the, the earliest order chronologically, and last means the last order. And then expression uh, is where we can actually do uh, a different type of criteria there, and where is where we can add criteria there as well. So let's do a sum on the order amount. And then maybe I want to have a count. Well, let's, let's run this one. I'll pick on run. So now for each customer, I have a sum of the orders. So uh, a totals query can really give you some quick totals, as you can see. I'm going to go back to design view. All right. So first we had the customer ID field, and that was a group by field. Of course, we turned the totals query on up there with that icon. Then I have another field that I want to sum. Now, we can have as many fields here as we want. So let's do the order amount field again, and I'll double click on order amount again. Now, look at this. On the total row, for that order amount, we'll do a sum, and for the next one over, we'll do a count, and I'll pick on count over here. Uh, I'll pick on average over here. So what this means is, for each customer, I'll have a sum of all the orders, a count of all the orders, and all of the average of the orders by a customer. Let's go ahead and run that. So for each customer, I have a sum of the orders, the count, and the average. So notice how you can get really, really great results when we do a totals query. Now, let's see who our top customer is. So if I click on the pull down for the sum, I'll do a sort largest to smallest. Now we can see how Quick Stop has the largest uh, uh, amount of sales. Now who had the number highest number of orders? So I'll click on this column 
and I'll sort large to the smallest. So save a lot had more orders, even though uh, quick stop total was bigger. The save a lot's count is bigger. Who had the biggest average order? I'm going to click on that pull down for the average, and I'll pick on sort large to the smallest. And now we're back to quick stop had the, the largest average order. Okay. So now that I have this information, I could start to uh, you know get some nice results out of my data. That was called a totals query. So once again, it started off as a normal query, and then we picked in the word totals up there. That added this total row over here. You would pick a field that you want to group it by. So that's why we picked on customer ID, and then it says group by right there. And then you would add some fields that you want to sum or count or average or any of the other combinations. So there is what we call a totals query. I'm going to close that window. Of course, we'll save it. And I'll call that uh, orders uh, totaled by customer. Let's do another totals query. Maybe I want to sum, sum it by employee this time. So we'll make another query. I'll pick on create query design. I'll still use the orders table. Now watch, I'll pick on the total choice up there. This time we'll group it by employee ID. Employee ID is the group by field. Then I'll double click on order amount. In fact, I'll double click on order amount three times. I'm going to make this one a sum on the total row. I'll make this one a count. And I'll make this one an average. So it doesn't take long to do. And now if I run that, now I have a subtotal by employee, right? So, I mean, with that total square, you can get pretty quick results. I'm going to close that window and then I'll say yes. And now we'll, we'll say orders total, order totals by uh, employee. Notice how we're starting to have a bunch of queries in our database. You could really have as many as you wanted to. Uh, actually, there's a limit to the number of objects you can have in your database. It, it's in the thousands, you know, so you should be fine for, for uh, quite a bit of time. So notice how if you've gone through this course, we've been able to make these different queries. Those last two were called totals queries.